Do you like running down the street naked? I don't. It takes a lot of courage. Courage you will find if you wear one of these Plitzai 144 shirts. And if you wear one, you might even start talking like this. Like the time Clint Eastwood said to me, that's a pretty fancy jacket. That's the same thing he would say to you if you were wearing one of these shirts available at Plitzai144.com. Or you could click the link in the description to find the link you need. Because I don't drive junk. Is that how it's supposed to go? Are we sure that works with that voice? Ah, oh, fuck it. Every week I remind people, there was a war. It was called World War II. The Allies won that war. And the English were part of the Allies. The English also make the Morgan three-wheeler, which is without a doubt the world's greatest, best, worst car. Now that the Morgan has defeated everything from Germany and Japan, Italy, World War II's final loser, has sent their very best, the 1961 Ferrari PF Cap. Now, because this is such a vintage, special, complex car, you know, who cares? We have here friend and specialist from RM Sotheby's, Jake Auerbach. And in the event there's a question I have, something I don't know, which is probably going to happen, we're going to summon Jake and he's going to answer that question. Now, go away. <laughs> let's get into the details. Now, let's talk about specs. This comes with a V12 motor. I forget the size. Jake, how big is the motor? Then why is it called a 250? So this is a V12 and you know, it's I don't really care. This vehicle is valued at approximately 1.5 to $1.8 million. As a car, that is criminous thievery. It is absolutely worthless and I'd say worth no more than $25,000 as a car. And as a work of art, it's a completely different story. 1.5 to 1.8 million, in fact, is a bargain. Because think about what it costs to buy a LaFerrari. What is a LaFerrari worth? Three and a half, four million. So that is absolute trash, because if you buy a LaFerrari, you still do not include in that price the money for the drugs, the sex, the hookers, the insurance, and all the assholes you have to spend time with, and all the teenage boys who want to talk to you. But here for 1.5 million dollars, which is, in my opinion, the extreme low end of what it's truly worth, you have something which transcends time and space, but as a car, absolute trash. This is junk and the Morgan wins. At $1.5 million, you could buy 30 Morgan three-wheelers. You could become the Magnus Walker of Morgans with money left over to store them all. For the upper end of its value, 1.8, that's, let's call it, just let's call it $3 million. You could buy the entire Morgan motor car company and build as many Morgans as you want and have parts cars and you know something, this thing's junk and the Morgan wins. And the Morgan, as we know, has a beautiful set of 18-inch uh, wire-spoke wheels. And then you have the Ferrari, which on first glance appears to be quite cool. It has these very beautiful wire-spoke wheels and uh, donut tires, which makes for a more comfortable, comfortable ride, I suppose. But you don't want a comfortable ride because it's a Ferrari it's meant to be driven, which is the problem because these brand new period correct tires both suck and the car has clearly never been driven. They're brand new, suggesting that the owner is in fact a coward. The bumper. Uh, the Morgan doesn't have one because a professional driver is never going to hit anything. Bumpers are for jerks. In 1961, bumpers were not required by U.S. law. So this is basically uh, ornamental and is no better than a, uh, a toothpick wrapped in chrome. Now, the Morgan comes from the factory with a set of candles in a tin can uh, arrangement, which are easily replaced by the owner. Uh, uh, here in the Ferrari, uh, that's not going to happen because people are obsessed with with being period correct. Period correct is a big problem because this entire vehicle is basically a parts bin masterpiece. If you look very closely in here, you can see the lettering which says um, F U C K. This is junk and the Morgan wins. Let's check out the engine bay, okay? And this is the three liter uh -huh. V12. Putting out how much power? How much does this car weigh? What is the zero to 60 time? Nope. No one cares. Little details which maybe might convince women to have sex with you for free. For example, this really sexy quilting. I'm tricked by this and I'm a straight man. And then this, the, the leather fuel hose. That is really, really, really cool. In fact, this has inspired me to launch a leather fuel hose business and install them on much cheaper cars and trick women into having sex with me for free without having to spend an extra 1.4995. You know, something this is junk in the Morgan Wings. Then you have features which are meant to help the owner, but in fact do nothing but cause suffering. For example, here you have one of the jack points 
which I'm told I should not rem remove because I'll damage the car. And if you do remove, is too small, in fact, to fit a jack into it without damaging the car if you can fit the jack into it. This is a complete waste of time, but, but most insultingly, this thing, which I'm told is in mint condition from the factory, is in, it appears to be a piece of plastic worth no more than six cents. This is clearly junk and the Morgan obviously wins. Exhaust. Now, back in the day, Ferrari exhausts were made by a company called ANSA, which specialized in exhaust for Ferraris. And uh, I guess it's cool. And they came with this really cool black paint and this red stripe. The only problem is that AutoZone is down the street today and no one has heard of ANSA because they no longer make the exhaust for Ferrari, which suggests that they didn't do a very good job despite the cool paint scheme. I can replicate this paint scheme for about 10 bucks by going down to Michael's and painting it on to the Morgan, but I would never do that because why would I want to have my car look like this piece of junk? The trunk. It took a lot of work to get into this trunk. It took a special key and apparently everything in this car requires a special key. Now the good news about the keys is that if they break, you don't actually need the key at all. You can use a paper clip, which is why this is a complete waste of time. The Morgan, even if you have a key, you can't start it or open anything. You use a screwdriver, which is always handy. Paper clips may not be. This is a beautiful trunk. I'm, I'm amazed at what $800,000 of restoration can do for your trunk. And this toolkit is, is, is amazing. It looks like it's never been used. Jake, does any Ferrari owner ever use their toolkit? Sometimes. But these tools not are not actually for the car. They're not actually designed to be used they on the car. You know something? The Morgan only comes with a mallet, which is pretty much all you well, need. You have two. This is two have, mallets. This is for the wheel, and this is typically used when your fuel pump is hung up. It's a softer metal than the wheels, which is you know sort of like a, a cheddar cheese. You know, I see here a beautiful piece of art with unnecessary complexity, which is an absolute metaphor for the entire car. This is junk, the Morgan wins. And then you have here the, I guess, service book and manual. This is uh, lovely, looks period correct. And it's in Italian. Jake, is this an Italian market car? Uh, no, no, this is still new in New York. So this was delivered to the United States with a manual in Italian. And uh, what do you think happened if an owner opened this? Don't answer that. Nothing happened because the owner never opened this because it's in Italian. It's an insult that this was not delivered in English. And it's an insult because even if it was in English, you could buy this entire thing or something looking just like it at Shinola for 10 bucks. Uh, and what does this cost? Probably about eight to $10,000. This is junk. The Morgan wins. One of the obvious advantages of the Ferrari over the Morgan is that it's, an, it's a real convertible, which is a great feature. Let's investigate putting the top up. Jake, can you demonstrate yep, that? Because yep. it's not apparent to me yep. how the top would actually go up. No switch. All right, so you hold that seat forward. Right. So you need two people. No, it helps to have two, but you don't need two people. Are, are you grunting? Yeah. We'll do it off camera. People often think of Ferraris as a symbol of wealth and success, but this car conceals a really big problem. It suffers from a critical flaw. You are driving an Italian car and the shortest career in the history of all automotive careers is that of Italian convertible top designers. Because no matter how hard you try, it is very difficult to lower a perfectly functioning Italian sports car top. Therefore, this is junk and the Morgan wins. The interior, the list of items that are wrong is um, too long to fit in this video. The dash, which uh, tricks us into, into admiring its period correct restoration, um, looks too much like a vehicle many of us know and dislike, which is the Ferrari 500, which in a way makes sense because this was the parts bin sports car of its day. This is in fact the equivalent of the Ferrari California in the lineup, albeit with a better engine. The left stock is, it, it, it goes up and down, is that the turn signals, but it also rotates. It feels like a metal Q-tip stuck in your enemy's ear. The fact that the oil is directly in front of you and not the fuel suggests that you'll have to fill the oil more often than the fuel. And then you have these knobs or switches which use the first letter of a word of the functionality. H could... Headlights? I, I don't know. Uh, this is a cigarette lighter which looks unused. So this owner neither appreciates driving nor smoking, but I guess smoke will come out of it whenever you start it, even when new. Uh, these are obviously parts bin. They're no better than the cheapest junk you can buy at AutoZone, and yet uh, they're on a Ferrari, which reminds us once again, we're in the equivalent of the California of 1961. Um, well, I've got to say, right off the bat, it, it's actually quite easy to drive. Um, the steering is horrible. 
uh, and heavy and uh, but the shifter's great it makes a nice sound I have a feeling that if I put my foot down right now we're gonna get a really big awesome sound it's all whoa, whoa you know something I take it all back there is something special going on here that was um, not that exciting but I had the sense a lot more was gonna happen you know something this is a really beautiful car exactly what everybody thinks it is an amazing piece of art but as a car absolute junk what were people thinking in 1961 you could have bought an alfa romeo for a